Hi, this is Ed Paget, also known as Rough Dog. This is my second tutorial video, and today you're going to be looking at how I airbrush faces and some of the details that make a face like lips and eyes. Um, so first of all, talking about what I start with is to do very broad strokes and do all the sort of general over view of the shading. So that's a kind of mid-tones and doing some of the shadows like you see I'm doing here around the side of her face, some of the darker, broader areas of shadow around her eye, around one side of her nose where the, the shadow cast down to one side, and around the chin and underneath the lip. And then what I tend to do is once I get to a certain point is start making the brush smaller and start doing the finer detail. And what you'll see is when I get to a certain point of doing a portrait, when I concentrate on something like the nose in particular, I'll see that um, basically I have minused out using the polygon selection tool, the nose. That way I can then inverse it either way. So I work inside the nose and work on just that area, or I can then inverse it and then work on everything around the nose. So you see right now what I'm doing is actually airbrushing inside the nose itself, concentrating on some of the shadows and the nose itself actually on the photo has a kind of highlight, probably bounced off of um, light from her hair a little bit probably, so see it's a little bit red. And using this process of using the polygon selection tool, which is something I use a lot, it helps me get, whilst airbrushing, these strong sort of lines, these uh, very clean lines around certain areas where in the photo I think I see clean lines. So that's around the bottom of her nose, um, separating the nose from the, her bottom lip, for example. You see I'm brushing in there, and then I inverse, and then we'll work on the areas around the edge of the nose, like the nostrils, putting the shadow in there, and then any kind of shading and colouring that goes on, say, the top lip. And it helps make sure that those two parts of the face, the nose and the top lip, or, whatever, or the cheeks on her face, actually remain separate. And you'll notice there a little bit what I just used is actually looking on on the right hand side of the right hand side of her nose or on the painting the left side. I actually used a little bit of um, the chalk tool. So most of the um, portrait painting I do will use the airbrush tool. And when I use the airbrush tool on a portrait, the airbrush tool uses about ninety is used about ninety percent of the time. But what I'll use sometimes, like you see there along the curvature of her sort of eye line, her eye socket there, going up around the bridge of her nose, the top of her nose there, is that I actually use the chalk tool. The reason why I use the chalk tool is the airbrush tool is great, and it is what I use to do most of the shading work on a portrait. But the reality is that everyone has a texture to their skin. Everyone's skin is slightly rough, it has a slight texture to it. And I do find that out of the tools available in Art Range, the chalk tool is actually a really good tool for adding that slight texture to it. So you see that um, just above her her right eye, there's a little bit of grain there, and a little bit down the side of her nose, a little bit of grain. And looking on underneath her left eye, on her left cheek, um, I'm about to in a, in a few seconds. I'll airbrush in the highlights of the photo. So that's where I tend to use pure white. And when I'm doing highlights, particularly on say a forehead or a cheek or down a nose, I'll actually use the chalk tool like I am here right now. Uh, you'll see that there's a chalk tool being used there and on her forehead in a moment I'll actually use the chalk tool. And the reason why, like I said, is it's just got that grain to it. And skin has grain and that grain tends to show up the most in highlights with a pure white, which I've used on one side of her top lip, on her cheek, down the bridge of her nose, and across the forehead and just above her eye there. Um, in terms of general shading of the face on the face layer, I'll actually do the highlights at the end mostly. See, I'm just going in at the, uh, the end of this process and just doing all fine detail. But I'll always put the highlights in last. You see what I just did there as well is also cut out um, an area for, area for the mouth and also in the eye sockets, going in with the polygon tool again, cutting those areas out. And now what I've also done is created a new layer above the face layer and filled in her lips with the most common shade of red 
of the lips and that's what I've done there and then again like the face it's gone in first and done the general shading using a mixture of the airbrush tool and the chalk tool because she does have texture on her lips now what I'm doing is actually using the brush tool which you see is highlighted in green on the tool wheel I've used pure white and actually going in finely and painting in stroke by stroke very small tool and actually painting in that really crisp white highlights that she's got on her lips and just going in there and adding that kind of that kind of crisp sort of detail you get just going in there putting in loads of little tiny flecks of white light that bounce off of there and then using a light pink um, along the top of the bottom lip which is where her lipstick hasn't actually you know, the girls don't put lipstick all the way into their mouth as such um, and that's what I've done there now this is a good example of when using art rage making sure like anything in life you use the right tool for the right job so I use the um, general paintbrush for doing the white crisp highlights but then actually use the airbrush to do that soft sort of look um, so it's all about using the right tools for the right job and then using chalk for higher for skin texture and now what you see I've done is then created a layer behind the face and filled that in with black and that's the shadowed area of the mouth you know the dark area of the mouth and then somewhere between there there's a layer between there and the face layer is create another layer which is dedicated to for her teeth and you see as I'm brushing the teeth I've drawn a selection tool and then tooth by tooth painting that in so I then get crisp lines on each tooth draw paint paint one tooth minus it out do the next tooth minus it out and that way I get crisp lines you see that's how I've done that there so I'm sorry this is skipping over it a little bit but don't have too much time to talk about each thing in fine detail. When it comes to eyes, I actually tend to do eyes over three or four layers. The layer at the very far back would be for the eyeball itself and the colour and texture and shadow that would go in there. The layer in front of that would then be the iris, which is what I'm painting right now. And then the layer in front of that would be for maybe just the pupils and highlights, like the, the, actual, the, the white reflections. And then there'll be a layer in front of the face, which would be for eyebrows and eyelashes. We'll get to that in a minute. You see what I'm doing now is actually just um, doing all the eyeball and doing that on one layer. And the iris and the pupil are on a layer in front of those. But both of those are behind the face layer. You'll have to ignore some of the errors that have come up in the iris and the pupil. And the reason why that's happened is that um, one of Art Rage's um, slight issues is that with script playback, it's always not 100%. And that's what has happened there. Now you'll see on a layer in front of the face layer, I've actually created another layer and on there I'm brushing in the eyebrows. And what I tend to do nowadays for most of my portraits is to actually use the pencil tool for hair. I used to use the pen tool and I'll use the pen tool in a moment for um, the eyelashes. But I tend to nowadays, most of my hair, I will use the pencil tool. And the reason why I use the pencil tool most now is because like skin when I use the chalk tool hair has texture no matter how fine and smooth it is hair has texture and the pen tool doesn't give you texture it gives you very clear pen like strokes the pencil tool gives you that same kind of thing but with a grain to it and that's what hair does actually have hair has grain no matter how smooth it is I've gone back a little bit to um, on the painting here I've created actually on this painting I made a layer in front of the face but behind the eyebrows and that was for this model's um, eye makeup uh, um, eyeshadow and stuff like that and uh, that, that, that gives me a bit more control and I tend to, that tend to find as a general rule that the more layers you create the more control you have but it's having that balance you don't want to have a hundred layers just for one portrait at the same time you don't want to kind of restrict yourself and just have two layers to work on for the whole painting it will find you make it more difficult for yourself but again using the selection tool minusing out the eye itself I can then work around the the eye without going into it using the selection tool I've minused out the that line where the eyelid is um, and just work in that area itself I can put in all the eye makeup and the highlights and now on a layer in front of the face um, and probably in front of the eyebrows, eyebrows as well, we have another layer again 
for the eyelashes and you'll see that looking at the stroke work actually I will draw in every single eyelash as much detail as I can and if you want to do photorealistic work um, the devil is in the detail here so like I said you just take going that extra length and not settling for um, a kind of attitude of that will do just really push yourself to try and put that extra little bit of detail in and follow the reference image as closely as you can I'm not saying my artwork is photorealistic it's what I aim for don't think I always achieve it but the point here is that I always like to try and put in as much detail as I can personally see and you see here going over this replay I'm actually just putting a lot of effort into making sure that the eyelashes have as much detail as it can and doing all that bottom work there as well and this is how I work so it's so really a breakdown of airbrushing the face using the chalk tool for highlights using the selection tool and minusing out areas where I don't want to work and make sure I get clean lines and then using separate layers for things that are behind the face like the mouth and the eyes and using layers in front of it for things like brushes, um, eyelashes and eyebrows so I hope that's been useful um, if you have any comments please leave them on YouTube